you are making a choice for the rest of us. When you go out, you decide, well, you've had COVID once and you don't care if you get it again, but I care deeply. If you give my patient who is already struggling to breathe walking down the block, I care deeply if you cause my 95 year old in long-term care to be locked in again. And I care deeply if you cause my nurse colleagues to get sick on the job or to have to leave their jobs because they're burned out because they're working in understaffed environments because COVID has run rampant. Good day. Today I'm going to do a reaction video to um, this debate that just happened the other day. If you want to check it out, it's right here. Or is it right here? <laughs> yeah, I think it's right here. Okay, so what attracted me to this right off the bat is the video had a woman by herself in a room with a mask on. And I'm like, is this really still happening right now? And I had to watch it. And as I watched it, I... It, at first it was bothering me, but then I noticed her reaction and her energy and I, uh, I saw that there was something else being shown. So here, let's, let's go through it. So let's start there. Are we back to normal yet? No. So the language that you use when you say something like uh, normal is a far right um, language of anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers and ableists who uh, disregard the impact of COVID on on seniors, on children, on educators, on essential workers, on healthcare workers, on our healthcare crisis. Uh, there's nothing normal about getting COVID, repeated infections, children and adults being hospitalized, and long COVID. So right off the bat, she names anybody that wants to start to take back some precautions is far right. So that just shows her reason and her logic right off the bat. This shouldn't have much to do with whether we're conservative or liberal. However, it does seem to correlate heavily from one side to the other, which means it looks like it's probably the news that each side watches is the story that's being pushed forward. So if we have households that had a one person that's hardcore into the liberal side and watching and CNN all the time, then that person could bully the rest of the people in the house to have to follow and and do the the vaccine and follow all the protocols with masks and stuff like that. And you can see that's what she does right here is goes in right to the the weaponizing of compassion, which is the is the dark feminine, it's the dark mother, right? And that's how you weaponizing compassion and empathy. Let's see what's next here. No disrespect in asking this, but we've obviously done hundreds of programs during the course of COVID-19, and I don't think we've ever had a guest who kept their mask on during the interview. So again, with, without yeah. prejudice, I merely ask, how come you're wearing yours now? So let me explain. So I'm a doctor. I'm a family doctor. I see patients in my office. I just had patients who were in my office with their babies, and I have more patients coming in this afternoon. COVID is airborne. That means that COVID remains in the air even after you've left the room. I keep my mask on. It is a way to protect myself. It's a way to protect my patients. It's a way to protect my staff. So she goes right into justifying why she's sitting alone in a office with a mask on that proven by science to not be very effective at all, as they'll get to later on in the video here. Doctors that are people we're supposed to be trusting to be following such ridiculousness and bullying people like this to put on their masks. And it's just terrible what that does to children, you know, and there I've just weaponized compassion, right? I just said, the, and, the, and I, I'd rather not do too much of that, but we should acknowledge the fact that what this has done for mental health uh, <clears throat> during all of this and, and how there's all these extra deaths, like 1,000 to 1,300 extra deaths per week just in the UK alone. And we can't, I don't want to weaponize compassion. I don't, I'm not going to use this, but she's saying we're saving all these lives. Well, are we really? You got to look at both sides. And um, one of the guys actually in this interview, you notice he brings up the um, <clears throat> serenity prayer because he's saying, you know, give me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. Right? And she, this woman is is putting all this panic into the world and and bullying people with this fear and stuff um, because she's not uh, accepting the fact that we have to find a way to deal this, with this in a new way because um, it's not going away. 
So here's the next clip. Dr. Kaplan, can I just circle back to your yeah. first answer, which 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 did have some fairly tough language about, you know, far right talking yeah. points and that so kind of stuff. Yeah, so let me just respond to what um, both of uh, my colleagues have just said. So willful, willful ignorance and denial is a failure um, of providing information to the public. So she goes on, first of all, doesn't address the comment about the far right at all. And when she ignored the fact that he called that out as being unreasonable, there's only so many of those that you should take before you realize that it's pearls upon swine. There is nothing that you are saying that, that is based in science or medicine. What you are saying is based in right-wing, anti-mask, anti-vax ideology, which has been your calling card throughout the pandemic. All right, let's let him respond. Sorry, I basically, you said uh, you said something and then anti-mask, anti-vaccine? Uh, right wing, maybe? Right wing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. What I'm saying very clearly is you have stood with people. You were part of the the push to politicize and to to use the terms restrict and freedom and all of this terminology that is really, I mean, vaccines, vaccine mandates are quite normal. So first of all, you don't attack the person in the uh, interview. You, we're having a debate and she's tagging him directly and actually she's calling him all this stuff that he isn't which he actually says in the uh, video he's 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 actually promotes vaccines and stuff you know he's just anti uh, control like the reason they're having this this interview is because of of the uh, of the college making people have three vaccines just to to come in still we're still forcing people to do vaccines and this is ridiculous and he's here to tell them this is not a good idea and he's a very educated person that's uh doing so so and i thought i just had to laugh um this is where like her just attacking him like that and like and just using just ridiculousness it, it's hard for me to not laugh like see seeing somebody get emotional and attacked like that and i and i think that that's something i have to work on because uh if i want to be able to uh get along with people that are um in these states you know so it's patently it's patently untrue what both of you are saying about masks being ineffective in fact the state of massachusetts in february lifted mask mandates and any um schools that had lifted mask mandates with the exception of boston and chelsea um any schools that lifted mask mandates saw the transmission go up by 30 percent those schools that maintained mask mandates saw an appreciable difference in the amount of COVID that was spread within classrooms. You can roll back the tape. I didn't say masks are ineffective. I've always worn a mask in certain clinical situations throughout my 20 years in healthcare. Um, we want people to wear masks in appropriate settings and we want them to wear appropriate masks. You um, mentioned a series from Boston, a case series from Boston that I'm not uh, familiar with. I don't believe that that data would have been randomized. I think the data that I um, spend the, pay the most attention to is the Bangladeshi trial where they randomized 380,000 people um, to masks versus not by village and found that there was about a 10% reduction in uh, transmission in those villages that were randomized to masks. So it's a, it's pretty standard when we read the medical literature to privilege uh, randomized control data such as that Abelok paper from Bangladesh. So she used a uh, one source to prove her effectiveness for masks and he brings out the big guns and just tells her the truth. Masks are 10% effective with the right masks, okay? So, you know, she's sitting there in her room and justifying this in any way, trying to hunt out any uh, study that tells her that it sh she's the virtuous person by sitting in her, the room destroying brain cells by breathing through a mask all day. Yeah, well, I, I have I feel sorry for these people because I, I think that it's it is psychological. They they stood so hard behind something that they and they've been tricked. So they're the likelihood of them seeing or even looking at any data and saying, oh, that's not that's just misinformation is likely not. She's going to probably bring this to her death, unfortunately, if she's this connected to that story she's told herself and for that story she's told all her patients make informed decisions let me just finish let, let me just finish this this is a really important message so i find that one uh, very interesting because this is right near the beginning this is seven minutes in and he's a very kind person that's running this and the fact that she's so emotional 
about her message that she's going to act that way towards him. It's like, oof, okay. And these, at first, like, when I was watching this thing, I was like, I can't believe a doctor is talking like this. But then I really see, though, that she's she's like a deer in the headlights, too, you know? And I don't want to make judgments about her, but she's she's got that... Sl- um, sad look in her face, like like she's she's worried and she's in that fear cycle, and I I have compassion for that, and we need to somehow find a way to get people out of this, or maybe they never will. Why do you think public health has undermined that message? I mean, surely they're in the business of encouraging public health. So why do you so think they're doing in the opposite? Ontario, in Ontario, the politicians have pandered to a very small group of people who occupied our streets in Ottawa, who have gone around spreading misinformation like wildfire via social media and other um, rag magazines and and people are um, getting all of this information from um, people who are anti-science, anti-democracy, and honestly, they're they're, um, left not sure what to do because the public health units themselves had said to us, they can't push back against the Ontario government because that is their boss. So public health can speak out, but they tell us that it's going to be really bad in the fall and we we are um, the ones who have to take take on the burden of our sick patients and also ch- we have to continue to try to be able to work despite the healthcare crisis where we are understaffed, where doctors and nurses and personal support workers and others are all put at risk. Okay, but I, I know, let's get all the facts on the table here. I also note that the, the current Premier of Ontario uh, kicked out a number of people from his caucus because they wouldn't get vaccines, uh, declined to sign the nomination papers of others who refused to get vaccines and therefore he wouldn't allow them to run for his party. I mean, he's he, he's gotten in trouble. He called the people who you say he's in league with, a bunch of yahoos on the south lawn of Queen's Park because they were fighting vaccinations. Uh, Are you only telling half the story here? I'm sorry, but with all due respect, the Premier's daughter is an avid anti-vaxxer, and we all know that. But that's not the Premier. Let's just be honest. Yeah, but you know what? The Premier doesn't show up. So she goes on talking about misinformation and talking about all this anti-science and all this BS, and then she goes in and talks about misinformation, and he schools her here. He says... This guy's actually doing some quite evil stuff. So he kicked out people from his caucus. The One of the premiers of Ontario kicked... These are all like ridiculous things that are still happening. He won't... Uh, he declines to sign the nomination papers for anyone that's unvaccinated. This is what's going on in our country. Right? So he's putting some facts out to her and she's talking about misinformation. And she calls it Occupy Ottawa. Well, these was the trucker convoy that got things to change. See how stories can be so two-sided. Like, it's ridiculous. We have two um, we have two intersubjective realities happening at once. The timeline has split. I did. I spent nine years there. It was the time of my life. Um, I feel very passionate about that school, and that's why I chose to speak out about why I think this is the incorrect mandate at an incorrect time. Um, I do agree with Dr. Smith that... Um, Reasonable people could say, well, if it cuts down on transmission, then perhaps it would be a good mandate. And, and Western is an independent institution. It could make that sort of argument. It hasn't made that sort of argument. It can't make that sort of argument because it's not in line with our best scientific understanding right now, which is that after about f- four months after your booster, it's roughly 0% effective at preventing transmission. And I posted those papers on my Twitter. Um, I think it's in Nature Communications in the Journal of the American Medical Association. So Western University is making ridiculous arguments that can't even be backed up by science. They asked if they could do a debate, which college is about, and they declined. They won't allow a debate about it. So this is a big issue, as you can see. So, you know, we got some stuff to deal with. There's people that are going fast to the darkness, and they're harming people. And um, I'm very surprised that we're still playing this game, and I'm surprised that people are still following. And to talk about wearing masks and getting vaccines and staying home when sick and providing adequate paid sick days and dealing with structural inequalities that leave our most vulnerable people in our population uh, at risk of getting COVID repeatedly is not fear mongering. That is called taking care of each other. And actually, I want to go back to something that um, our colleague uh, said about um, about the importance of uh, teaching uh, empathy and teaching civic responsibility and teaching our uh, next generation that it's really important to do what you what what you can not only because it satisfies what you want in that moment but because it's about taking care of other people so if we go back to the idea of we're in this together if we go back to the idea of truly caring about each other it is not a huge thing to ask people to mask so they're again weaponizing compassion and empathy truly caring about each other 
right? And that's what she says. Truly caring about each other. So, you know, maybe uh, we should look at both sides of the story and try to make the best decision together by looking at both sides of things and see if we are truly caring about each other. Because sometimes the truth on one side is not the truth on the other. You are making a choice for the rest of us. When you go out, you decide, well, you've had COVID once and you don't care if you get it again, but I care deeply. If you give my patient who is already struggling to breathe walking down the block, I care deeply if you cause my 95 year old in long-term care to be locked in again. And I care deeply if you cause my nurse colleagues to get sick on the job or to have to leave their jobs because they're burned out because they're working in understaffed environments because COVID has run rampant. Okay, let me get some, let me what get, you let, need to do let me get some feedback in the studio. Mongering. You need to take away the fear mongering and you need to start talking about civic responsibility and empathy. So take away the fear mongering. Hey, is there somebody that looks like she's in fear here? Look at her, her reaction, right? A lot of people react uh, to fear in different ways and hers is coming out in anger, right? So she's, she's the one that's falling for this fear mongering and pushing it. So yeah, well, let's stop the fear mongering. That's truth. As you can see, there, her logic is wherever she finds it. So she can always just go and look at all the studies that she wants to prove her story, as we all can. You know? But these guys in this episode, they stayed calm, they stayed rational and logical, called her out when she was doing stuff that she shouldn't be, and she couldn't stay calm. She had to weaponize compassion. You know, that's the dark mother. And that's how they pushed this on people. And this is an example of the dark mother that actually is a doctor. And so this is doing a lot of harm still to people that are listening to these people. And so people can still live in their false reality. Well, things are not going to change. We're on a new timeline, a new reality. And they can join us whenever they wish. Some people may not. They might continue their silliness. They might continue just following. The road to hell is paved by good intentions. And she seems to be intending well. So I forgive her for she knows not what she does. And that's all we can do. And with anybody that's weaponizing compassion and empathy on you, you should forgive them. They know not what they do, but you should not allow that abuse on you and you should love them from afar. And if you want to check out a video about that, I have this right here on maternal forgiveness. And um, we do have to uh, unfortunately share a world with some people that have been abused and are dealing with some serious issues and trauma. So let's get together and figure out how to deal with this issue. I'm definitely not the competent one to be able to stand one with one of these people and look them in the face. I have troubles to cast any pearls upon these kind of people. So, and we're not warriors of the flesh. We're, or we are, um, and we're not fighting their flesh. We are fighting their actions and their singular, or their single acts right? Much love and God bless. And please save the children from this. And I, I hope we all can just pray that God steps in for these people's families because they may be stuck in a prison. Have a lovely day.